Hey chap, so yesterday we left off with a whole bunch of floating point numbers here. We need to try and figure out how we're going to get YAML to use the decimal instead of float. So I think we need to do a couple of tests here. Um, Shows 1.5, which is a bit weird. Um, hmm. This is pretty much exactly what we're doing at the moment. Okay, but hang on a second. Maybe this is something else that's causing it. I suppose it is formatting it with a float, right? Maybe that's what the problem is then. Maybe that's what the problem is. Um, um, is this the same as... I wonder if that is one for one the same as um python but in ginger see if we can do this then okay so test three is a is a decimal so what happens if we print a decimal as a float it fucking prints it fine Okay, so how the fuck then are we getting one point four and a gazillion nines if the YAML we are using is one point five? It makes no sense, man. And that is pulled into the object here.
That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. What does this look like here? Whatever, we're just going to add some X's and K works. Unit price. And see what that looks like there. Because that just comes from YAML. I don't understand it. Sense. Let's see what that looks like. It's 1.5 over here. That's even more weird. It's not like that yesterday. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Fair enough, let us check what it looks like after it was converted to a decimal. Um, this will then be self dot unit cost. Let's change these to Y's instead. Okay. <laughs> the fuck? How? How is that even possible? these are Oops. Um, soft cost makes absolutely no sense So, the float is displaying correctly, the decimal is displaying incorrectly. I must be missing something here. Where is Firefox gone? Let's check the, the manual again. support for fast correctly rounded decimal floating point arithmetic well yeah um oh if you give it a number we get 20 gazillion decimal places. Should we just feed it a string instead? I mean, it sounds a bit fucked up, but... Construction from integer or float performs an exact conversion of the value of that integer or float. The decimal numbers include special values such as none. Sensor, not a number. 
positive and negative infinity and minus zero. Well, we don't really care about nan infinity or shit like that, right? Hmm. Okay, I mean, I suppose the easiest way to fix this might be just to convert it to a string and then feed it into decimal. Oh my god. I don't even know, but... Is that gonna fix it? Potentially. Well, now it's fine. Okay, so we convert the float to a string and pass the string into decimal then. I mean... So everywhere we have a decimal and we're feeding it a float or something like that, we just throw a string at first. Ah, uh, that should be fine. That should be fine, that should be fine. This needs to then be string, string. Um, tax, where does tax come from? That is specified, I suppose. Let's just fucking throw that as, with a string as well. Okay, the sums we don't need to do. Okay, so if we regenerate our PDF now, we shouldn't get fucking. 20,000 decimal places, hopefully. Um, let's reopen that and see. Okay. That is apparently fixed. However, probably shouldn't have A third a decimal place. The tax needs to be constrained to two decimal places. I suppose it depends how you print it out really. But we could get a rounding error. If it does have so many decimal places places subtotal plus the tax might not match so we probably have to constrain that to two decimal places then um how the fuck do you constrain a decimal to two de to two decimal places there was a precision that's with get context Can't you set the precision on the decimal itself? Hmm. I wonder. Oh, there's actually a from float option. That's interesting. value equal to the first operand after rounding and having the exponent on the second operand isn't it just a fucking 
decimal place option here. Round to the nearest integer. Hmm. What would round return? Oh shit, my Firefox isn't displaying. Um, that's not good. Just give me a second to fix Firefox. What's that window name? Decimal. I suppose that that's a bit better now. Okay. So can we run just round on it? I wonder if that would work. Let's try something. Let us... Yes, we fixed that problem. Um, decimal. Supporter for types, decimal, and float. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's actually perfect because now test four is equal to test one plus test, test two plus test three. Don't want rounding errors here. That's 2.53. Let's add another. Okay, 2.553. Okay, 2.5875. So. something that would normally add it will be two nine two nine that would be five eight goes up to four. And with the other one, it would push it over. Take five. Okay. So, 1.27 plus 1.27 would be 2.54. That is going to round up to 2.55. 
me see what I mean. You don't want a quote to be sent out where you got around where you have the values being stored with so many decimal places and then your total at the end rounds to 2.55 where 2.27 plus 2.27 is equal to 2.54 that's the problem that we have here so um how can we can we do something like this maybe okay we can okay cool so if we've got two we got three perfect you'll see what i mean here now this is what the problem is see 1.27 plus 1.27 is 2.55 we've got to fix that so somehow the precision of our calculations need to be reduced to two decimal places round it up of course hmm so if we go back to our firefox and apparently you can set the context of the current thread to change the precision unless what we do uh, but what happened if we just rounded them i mean might be a bit easier just to do that so if we just rounded this to two places, what would this return? I don't know what fucking type that would return. Let's just check that our 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 types are staying the same. Um test one equals type test one test two equals type test two test three equals type test three test four equals type test four let's just see okay we are rounding on test two and it's still a decimal so that's perfect that's exactly what we want Okay, so now it's 2.54, you see that. Okay, and then the, the, the adding of it won't make any difference. It's just the, it's only the multiplication and division that we need to fix. So there we go, it's now 1.27, 1.27 is equal to 2.54. That's exactly what we want. So, I think we just have to find out where we have a multiplier or a divide I suppose uh, actually we don't need to touch the tax multiplier here what we do need to do is touch it over here so we're just going to round the tax to, um, to 2 decimal places um, unit price times markup multiplier um, now that is a bit more complicated because the unit price can have multiple decimal places we probably need to do it on total cost instead Hmm. This is the item, right? Yeah, this is the item. So unit price times markup multiplier. So the unit price can be different. The total cost 
is what is used with a tax calculation. Total cost and total price. So these need to be rounded. Total cost and total price. Those need to be rounded to two decimal places. And then markup multiplier, we don't need that to be rounded. And then the tax calculation needs to be rounded over here. Um, which is at the quote level now. So over here, the tax needs to be rounded. Okay, that should be good. So now if we grab, if we grab or create something with 1.05 and 1.085, 1 1.05, 1.085, 1. Oh, I forgot what that was now, God damn it. 1.105. One point one zero five with a fucking file go. One point one zero five whatever. One point one zero eight five. One point one zero eight five. Okay. That should give 1.27, 1.27, and 2.54. Uh, where the fuck is that gone now? Well, it's rounded that now. Hmm, I wonder if that is okay. We probably need one more quote, quote 5, and we put the other item on quote 5 instead. Do we have any multiplication here? No, we didn't. Okay, uh, then let us do that. Let us create quote 5. Let's copy quote. Oh, oh shit, what the fuck did I just do there? Quote 5. Quote 5 whatever and we're going to remove the water from this one and we're going to add it to this one surrender quote 5 as well and then let us add quote let us do this Intel on five. Thursday submitted a final DRM Intel GT Next poll of new material slated for introduction in the upcoming Linux 5.17 cycle. And we set our tax to. If we do that at zero, it's going to be the fine that's going to create a zero tax value. Well, okay, that's what we want to do here. So we get that multiplication as well. And if we rerun this, and we put quotes four and five. Remember, these have got more decimal places at the end, which should not be rounded. Okay, that looks good. So if we do like, um, the tax applies to the total of all of them, so these will always then match up. And we are actually displaying all the decimal places at the moment. So I think that's going to work fine then. That's going to be good. We can even test the other functionality where we give a cost and a markup of say 10% it's 
probably not going to make very much of a difference to that price, so mark up of 50%. Then. And we shouldn't get any funnies now. Okay, we got a mark up of 50%. That looks good. Now, if we add a tax to that. Five percent. And let's see what that looks like. Perfect. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we can generate a quote now that has got more than one section. It's got the the tax. And the total and what we can even do is just to remove more debugging that we've added uh, where the fuck is that over here we can just remove that macro and put the currency macro back into this we shouldn't be rounding anymore here rounding is now handled in python and uh, not in ginger Okay, and if we open that, we should maybe make the rounding configurable at some stage. Okay. That does look a bit better. Okay, so we've got a quote now which is just a single block with no summary at the end or anything like we have down over here. So we can display the pricing and shit over here. We've got the subtotal, total. We've got a single item without a, without a quantity, which just displays the total on the right hand side. But subtotal tax total. We then have one which doesn't have tax added. And we just have a total. Now these two would then be like on a summary like this over here, where it displays four and five. It's got the prices over there. It's got the total at the end. Various ways of doing shit. So now what you can do is you can add like a whole bunch of sections with a whole bunch of different things you're quoting on. And then you can draw a summary at the end, like this over here, which contains all the sections you've added and then the totals. And depending on the client that you have, you can then add the tax at the end instead of in these separate blocks themselves. Let's just check these values are correct though. So day one quote one is 111749. 111749, you see it pulls the total in over there. And quote three and four is 20 and 1.66. 20 tax is calculated over here, 1.66 tax is calculated over here as well. Okay, so I think that that is actually not looking too bad. This is all just very rough at the moment. ZQ talks what the fuck, mate. I think somebody needs to get removed. Hmm. Spamming. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so what is next that we need to add? I think next is generating a quote of a very complex product where we provided parameters in terms of how it's configured and then we have a python module or add-on that then builds the lines for the quotation itself uh do i have some sort of an example of that i think it's this block over here so we define the we say it's a product that we quote you on instead of I suppose we just need to say items and a product and then provide the data for it and that and then and then that data would be provided to the class that handles that specific product to construct it and work out all the line items to display so how the fuck are we going to do that we have a plugin system um we need to make the quotes aware of products that were added. Okay, first, how many fucking errors do we have here? Tuple imported on look, it's just sort out some errors that we have here and maybe add some documentation. Um I think we can remove most of this shit. And we can do a sort imports as well and a format document. Missing doc string and public package. Oh, we need to add, add a doc string and shit here as well. Um do a bit of copy pasta um, this is going to be a doctor it's quotes um, it's actually going to be a plugin not an add-on it just happens to be an add-ons directory at the moment um, why is this unable to import Okay, let's plug in backends. That's weird. Where is this even used? Oh, we pass the backend when we are when we are being loaded. Method could be a function. Okay, we don't really care about that. That can't really be a function because it has to be a method. So we can just ignore that error then. No self-use. We don't need self-use, mate. Can we just add a comma here? Now, is black clever enough? No, it's not. Let's move that over here. Move this one over here. Okay. Okay, we don't care about that error. And now, I think what we need to do is just document this so I don't forget what's going on here. Um, just need to set out a couple of things. of line item and we got unit which is optional string um each whatever um just giving some examples Decimal. 
How does that actually look? Now I saw someone else using something like that. Oh. Hmm, we can just do a global replace in future for that. Unit cost. Um, when specifying a markup. Price is optional. Um, um, either get a cost or Why do we have this as QTY, not quantity? I feel another global replace coming along. Optional decimal. Quantity is... Um, unit price slash cost. Get to a total line item value. Okay. Yes, give me a second here. in the info lines that is where things are going to get more interesting because those are what we're going to be adding next somehow i'm not quite sure how we're going to do that yet so you've got description unit unit cost unit price why are you fucking complaining blank line contents white space okay that's fine um and now if we check see that doesn't display any useful information probably just need to copy this and shove you over here Okay. Um, these all properties. Oh, 
item group is something we need to do as well. That comes in with our more complex products where you would have a bunch of items that make up a single line item. Okay, so quote section. This has got name and items. Um, items would actually be a dictionary here. So, there's a section displayed within a quote. Um, and for that, we need name. Name of quote section. And we need items, which is going to be um hmm. um a list probably of any at the moment um list of quote section items pass to class quote quote item right Oh, fuck's sake. Hmm. Okay. So name and items. Red section items. Being passed to class dot plates item. Um, this should actually be a list of quote section quote list of quote items, which will be KWOGs, right? Keyword arguments, each one being passed to class doc, doc let's quote item. Okay, can probably copy this then as well and shove it in here. And these are all properties. Okay, and doc let's quote representation of a quotation multiple quotations. Oh, actually, we don't need something like that. Parameters. Data. Hmm. Actually, that's not correct. 
This takes a YAML string at the moment. Hmm. Data would be a string. out nicely. Unless we make a factory below that converts the YAML into KWOGs and we pass KWOGs here. That might be a better idea. Might be a better idea. Um, so we got name. We're going to have tax rate. Um, that's going to be a union. either um decimal or this would actually then be a tuple but we don't get Tuples with YAML. Um, which makes that a bit more interesting. So it would have to be a list, right? And it would be a string and a decimal. Maybe quote. Would be a small decimal value, in which case the tax name is set to tax. Alternatively, the tax name and the rate can be specified with a list. Example some tax comma decimal twenty. Okay. And then sections. Um we're just gonna call this Can we do something like this? Is that even a valid type? Hmm. Let's just go list any quote sections. These sections. change this 
to use KWOX instead. Um, let's just copy it for now. Right, and this is going to be KWOX, and it's going to be probably any. We don't need to load anymore. And this is going to be KWARGS, oh, for fuck's sake, KWARGS, get name. Um, this is going to be if tax rate in KWARGS. Defaults to. Defaults to you know something we can actually remove these two this can be the last item in the list and we can remove that Well, there we go. Right, right. If tax rate in KWOG soft tax name equals tax by default. Um, oh, wait, that is if it's a list. I mean. We don't even need to check if it's a list, do we? We can just go KWOX over here. And KWOX over here. And this can now be a tuple. Even though we're passing it a list. Oops. Oh, for fuck's sake. Because we use minus one to get to the last item. Oh, wait, we can't use minus one here. We actually have to check if it's a list, right? Or at least it needs to have at least two items in it. But what we could do is we could also check if it's a tuple as well. This means that the right we can't have here either. Oh, I thought it was a great idea. It's not a great idea. Um, because this does not actually use. index okay so if we have a tuple tag the first item as the name if not the first the tax rate is then just decimal okay We don't have a tax rate, we just hit tax rate names none and tax rate none. 
you know, we could probably just remove one line of code and shove that over here. Okay. Okay. Where did our music go, Kendra? God damn it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see here. So we got the name, tax rate. We can change this back to the top of I suppose. Okay. Name, tax rate. Oh, we don't want the quote data here anymore. We don't need the quote data here anymore. And this is just going to be KWOGS tax rate, KWOGS tax rate, KWOGS tax rate, KWOGS tax rate, KWOGS tax rate. Oh my god, we've got KWOGS tax rate fucking everywhere. KWOG sections. Um, we need a little bit of error checking. Let's just fucking grab that. Um, we don't technically need a quote name. We don't technically need a tax rate. We do technically need sections. So sections not in KWOGs, missing attribute sections. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Now obviously this is gonna blow up, right? It's not gonna work first time. Okay, now we need to probably carry on. We will end up where we need to create the factory that converts the YAML into KWOG so we can pass KWOG here instead. And then everything is the same. We don't have fucking YAML passing and shit all over the place. Okay. Next, we got quotes collection. Let's put collection class. Use to display some collections of. Oh fuck! Collections of quotes. Use to group together quotes for. Summary, like display. Summary, like purposes. Fuck it. Okay. Oops. I can't spell either. Fuck. Okay. Um. And that. Hang on a second. The attributes are all going to be automatically pulled in, right? With Sphinx. Or the properties, I mean. Those are all automatically pulled in by Sphinx, so... We shouldn't need to worry about those. It's just the parameters that are passed to the class. Okay, I think that should be okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We will see. So, 
this is going to take a list of quotes. List of quotes. Hey there, dear Kasulu. How are you doing, man? List of quotes. For the collection. Fuck it. I don't know. List of quotes for the collection. And then tax is going to be the same as we have above here. Why is that is instance throwing a fucking warning? Return whether an object is an instance or class or subclass here of a tuple. Considering merging these instant Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can we can merge them. Thank you, Pylance. Or Pylant, whichever one of you gave that tip this kind of trouble even less code we have to write probably actually even more because we have to do it twice but anyway okay tax rate so quotes and we have our tax rate which is the same as above um tax rate for the collections can either be seen with this or value in which case the tax name is set to tax alternative tax name and the rate can be specified with a tuple that we need to fix over here um with a tuple okay and this is going to be an optional union decimal tuple string decimal. <laughs> right. And this we probably need to auto import. Okay. And this, seeing as it does accept a list anyway, I don't really have to care about that. That's not tax rate though. Maybe we should call this tax rate. Actually, hmm. I suppose tax rate would be better for this. Whoops. Tax rate. Okay. And we can push it. We can save one line of code. Okay. So we just have a list of quotes and a tax rate for this. Shove that in over here. Bam. Uh, documentation looks a bit fucked up, but we will see what things looks like when we use that. Okay, this is the actual plugin itself, which is loaded from from the templating system. <coughs> Just give me one second chat. He did need some mail here. Nice, nice, nice. I see activity. Okay. Um So, we need to get YAML sorted out here. Um, that's going to be interesting. 
So what we need to do is we probably need to add a method here. And this is going to take a string and it's going to return a quotation. Um, convert YAML into KWORGS and pass it to the .blades quotes class. Um, um, can we just go yaml.loads? Oh, it's safe load, right? And then we can go return docklets quotes paywalks. Expected zero positional arguments. Ah. Uh, okay. Fine. That is fine. Now that should still work, right? And then over here we can probably just go um, self dot quote factory, maybe. Maybe. We shall have to see. Okay, this cannot actually be a. I suppose that this could actually be a function or a method. Fuck it. I don't. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Okay. So this is probably going to blow up in a bunch of very small pieces. Yep. Ah, uh, well. Oh, unexpected tax. That is because we are passing that over there. At least it gives us the line in our in our template that has the problem, which is pretty fucking useful. Okay, this should hopefully still work. So we should still have Oh nice, nice, nice. Okay, so back to the bigger picture. We need to be able to use a class to generate the items for a quote. And for that, we're going to need to change our plugin system slightly because we need, we need the quote section, which is right fucking up above here, or even, even before the quote section. We actually need to generate the quote sections. Um, so the actual quotation itself needs to... Oh, that's actually a good question then. Because what happens if we want a, um, a Python class to be able to generate the sections here, because that would actually be quite nice, where you define a Per a parameter for the product 
and then the class itself can then create all the sections for you to sort of um, space things out a bit all nicely. Um, because say for instance we do something like a fiber per product that's over here, right? We would have one for the monthly fees and one for the setup fees. But the monthly fees might have various sections in it for what the client would be after. Like, I don't know, um, connectivity between A and B, which would be layer two, and all the components of that. And then section two might be something like internet access or something. And then section three might be something like um, um, SDN services offered on top of that. It might be quite nice to split them up. So I'd prefer to keep that option open. So we probably need the quotes to pass to pass the section to another class which will generate the uh, maybe not. Hang on a second. How do we how do we have it in our system at the moment? So it looks something like this over here. So section name items product. I Here's if an we interesting need... fact I just oh, found. God. The characters Bert and Ernie on Sesame Street were named after Bert the cop and Ernie the taxi driver in Frank Capper's It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, okay. Thanks, Kendra. That is enlightening. Um, so how would we then specify like a fucking product that has got a class associated with it for creating of the quote line items? We would probably need, so we've got a section over here with a name and shit, right? I wonder if we... There's probably two ways in which we can do this. Instead of having items, we have product. So section name, blah, blah, and then product. But the problem here is we can't then add stuff to the quote before and after it. Well, actually we could, right? How are those sections being created at the moment? It's being created from the quote itself, right? So we have a quote over here. That's a quote item. Quote section. So that is a section. And we've got a quote over here. That appends the object that's created from the section definition. Ha. Huh. I wonder. I wonder. If we want to be able to add sections before and after, we would probably have to shove it in here somewhere. Maybe we can inspect section if it contains product. And if section contains product, we hand it over to a plugin that's defined that product as something can handle, which is then going to create an object from it, which we can then, instead of append, we then extend. So maybe something like this. Check if this section is product uh, I mean it's now product service right it's not necessarily a product or a service it can be a product or a service um, <laughs> hmm. 
I wonder. I wonder how we can do this. I suppose it's always about the naming of shit, isn't it? We can actually fucking remove this shit. Uh, we actually can't remove that, but what we can do is we can maybe change or modify one of these. So what we would have maybe is quote section one, right? Um, and we can call this like some cool service, right? Let's just remove the fucking, t I suppose we can have the text right there. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, we can just put a unit price here of say 10, right? And now what happens if we want a complex product slash service to be added here? What happens if we added product service and we gave it something like company name dot category whatever dot something something cool and in here what our plan is is to add data um, and then attribute amazing I don't know amazing quality or fuck I don't know attribute amazing quality for instance right uh, so I don't know about calling this product service though what options do we have we got pro product service we've got product we could use class. We could use class over here. Or we could use plugin. Plugin might even be a better idea. Okay, we can use plugin here. Or even from plugin. There we go. I think from plugin is what we're going to go with. And this is now going to be called code section start. And we're going to have code section end. Just so we can see if it is getting it. Even more amazing thingy. Jiggy, whatever. Okay, so uh, this is making it harder to fucking read, actually. So we can add some fucking lines in between. So we're going to have from plugin, right? And we're going to define a product that is actually a class that is going to return all the items for this. <clears throat> I think the hardest thing for me to go further into that once we have that is we actually need to take an example. Someone, Someone call the doctor. Call the doctor. Nigel has gone off the rails. Yep, I can pretty much agree with that. Okay. Well, Cry GI, I'm going to somehow try and add the implementation of the product that's causing me all of these issues. Um, I just have to think how I can obfuscate naming of the supplier, the product, and the components of it. I'm going to have to add probably incorrect f values because it's all under NDA. I'm sure we can do something. I mean, we just can't refer to a supplier we can't refer to the product and we can't give the actual pricing of it and 
they don't tell you how to calculate the price of it so that's not under nda but i know how they do so we're going to be disclosing how to calculate stuff but i figured that out myself so that's going to be interesting you'll see how fucked up these um fiber network operators really are with all their pricing components and shit it's pretty crazy um okay so we're going to pull in quote sections from a pill from a from a plugin right so what we probably need to do is i probably need to get something to drink but before i do that we have to see how we're going to do this um we probably have to um call all the plugins we have and tell them to give us the um products that they are able to handle uh, we can call any method we please oh, on everything no not again <laughs> yep yeah okay such is life yeah um, so this returns our filters, our globals. We now need to get the classes for quotation sections. Um, but we probably can't do that here. We probably need to add this to the initialization. Um, we won't have a backend, but we can add a plugin manager here instead. <laughs> well, 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 well. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh no. Easy plugin manager. Uh, easy plugin, still easy plugin manager. Um, let us just remove these. Well, that one, okay. So during initialization, we aren't actually provided the easy plugin manager though. Hang on a second. Me telling new students who wants to be programmer. That's hell you're walking into. Yep. I don't disagree. So where's our init? Our init is over here. I suppose we could pass a plugin manager into the plugin to allow that then to query the plugin manager for its own um, plugins or so. And that happens after the plugin has been initiated, well, after it's been created as an object. We then call init on it. And I suppose we could pass the plugin manager to the init to allow that init to then query it to see if there's other things that it can be using. Okay, that might work. Um, so, um, can we just fucking pass the plugin manager here then? How many fucking add ons do we have at the moment? We got backend over here. You probably need to have or not have an init function or method. Can remove that from you. We got wheezy print. We can remove init from you as well. 
Who needs to be initialized, man? We've got a... I mean, the Comify we don't even need anymore. That's historical. The, the logger we have doesn't have an init, so that's fine. Okay, this might actually work then. So we pass the plugin manager to the plugin. Um, right, and then what we can do over here. Um, how the fuck do we call the plugin manager now? Something like this. Okay. 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 And this is going to be dark red squirts. Um. Hmm. What can we call that? This does not actually even have to return anything. It can just return none. Unless we don't even put it here. Can we not? Oh, we. Okay. We don't want to pass that to. Oh shit, you know, the problem we're going to have here is can't the context or can't the the um, Ginger 2 can access an object that it has in this case, quote 5 so we can't store anything in there that can then be called from within Ginger that could create a problem and passing the plugin manager to the quotes class is probably not the best of ideas to do that because then you can call the plugin manager which allows you to basically call any any method that the plugin can call or that the plugin manager can call which we don't want to have happen Ah. Oh. oh, that won't happen because if we call it via init and we do not save it as an attribute, we'll be fine. We're not going to save it as an attribute. So you won't be able to call the plugin manager from within Chinja then. That should be okay okay so we need a name of a method to call to return um products that we can add to our quote section so we can just add one over here but this can actually then go inside of the quote itself And we can save. We can save the plugin manager to the filter plugin, and we can pass it to the quote over here. That might work. That might work. Plugin manager. I see plugin stock. Easy plugin manager. Um, that's going to have to be optional over here. Soft dot plugin manager equals done. And we get it during initialization over here. Okay. And we are going to pass it to the 
quote over here. Why are you... Okay, that's fine. Doesn't expect position or... Oh, if we go to the quote over here... And we add in... Target manager. And it's going to be used somewhere over here. Okay. Um, ah, uh, fuck. Plugin manager used for finding the sections handled by plugin classes handled by plugins. Okay. So we are not saving that anywhere. That's used when we are past our name, tax rate, and sections, which is in KWAG. So we pass the plugin manager as the first parameter. And then we are going to get sections. So we can go plugin sections equals plugin method run. We pass it the section and we can go if plugin section self dot sections extend plugin sections bam okay Group with plugin methods used for handling quote sections Got something back. Add them to our quote. Um, okay. I think we need to check if we have from plugin. Check if this is a manually defined section or one handled by a plugin. If one plugin not uh, if from plugin in section Then we are going to use the plugin to get the sections. And if it's just maybe specified, pass the section to class directly. Else. Okay, now the from plugin, um, we probably need to pass that over here. Um, um, 
you can just pass the whole fucking section it doesn't really matter we'll just call all the functions and see which one replies with sections and then they can verify if the from plugin is actually inside of it and if they want to return anything or not which means you can then add an order so you can actually add more items to a quote by replying or by replying in more than one plugin with the sections you want and you can override shit then as well I guess it would be quite nice um so you just pass it the whole section we just had to find a name for this over here then okay I need to just quickly grab myself something to drink and I will be right back just give me a few minutes and I'll be right back oh where did my fucking overlay disappear to hmm ah there we go
Okay. So now, let's see. Doctorates, quotes. Hmm. Maybe get sections. Let's try and see how that works. So, how the fuck do we add that to a plugin now? Let's just copy something from this one. Let's just copy this. And shove it in here. Plates. Plates. Get. Sections. And what we are going to get past is a section which is going to probably be just a fucking any for now. From typing any. Um, it's probably going to return an optional list of doctorates. Quote section. Um, um doctorates, quotes, quotes. Uh, actually, we can just doctorates, quotes. I probably have to change my fucking environment, right? <laughs> Does that take a colon? And we want to calculate data test add ons. Um, this would be in the search path. So this is just so. Visual Studio Code is going to give us some nice type checking. Doclates, data test, where's data test, slash add ons. Slash doclates add on quotes, slash lib. Fuck me. Okay. Let's quickly need to restart VS Code. Let me just turn Kendra back on. So she doesn't misbehave. Why is she impersonating me? Kendra, why are you, why are you misbehaving so much lately? Okay, I see you quickly restart VS Code. Just give me a sec. Uh, I switch to Firefox quickly and restart VS Code. Um, restart. Ah, oh, it has to pop up with a fucking blank window, right? And open workspace. That one. Ah, oh, that looks a lot better. Okay. Let me just quickly fix the code window. Is it going to display the right one? Nope. Um, select the window again. What is that? Top let's test. Where is that window? There we go. Bam. Okay. So this is going to return an optional list of doctorate. Let's quit section. Um, we need list optional. We can remove this. Can remove that. Add a bit of debugging so we can see if we actually get called. Uh, 
Okay. So. Um. Do we have that hard coded at the moment? Probably. Um, can we just add docrates test plugin here, maybe, and see what happens? Um, docrates test plugin has no attribute path. Did you mean name? What? We might need a directory here. Might need to move this into here. And we might need to rename this. And you're now happy. Okay. Fair enough. Now, did you load? Maybe. Loaded add on. Nice. Nice. But it didn't blow up. That's even more interesting. Oh. I expected something very bad to happen. Where the fuck is our debugging information though? We should have some kind of debugging information somewhere here. Oh, there we go. Get docplates quote sections. Okay, so it actually queried it. That's nice. That is nice. So what we can do here is if from plugin in or not in section return if section from plugin is, fuck it let's just go is not equal to this Return. And now we can return sections. Uh, hang on, this is going to be return none, right? Now we can return sections. So let's try the simplest thing here. Let's try and pass it something like this. Um, oh, fuck it. Something equals something with a name. Right, and items, which is a list. Dictionaries and the description Super amazing complicated thing Unit price Okay, and then Something section is equal to docplates um, quotes dot docplates quotes section pass it something and return um something 
a section. Ten sections. And this is going to be star star. Alright. I'll buy something that is super amazing. Well, I suppose that shouldn't all be in capitals. I mean, they're super amazing. Eh, I can't have capitals everywhere. Complicated thingy. Okay. Is that going to work? That's the question. Potentially. Potentially. Ah. Awesome. Okay, so now we can have a Python class that calculates what goes into a section. Ha 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 ha. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, the next thing we probably need to do um, before we can actually add more code to this section or to that class over there. We need to add support from an item group, which is where the name is overridden to summing instead of displaying all the items that are under it. Uh, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so over here we've got a quote. Section, where's our fucking item group? Quote item group. Which combines the items under it and displays it as a separate name, as a different name. So how this is basically going to work is all the costing of a service is going to be within a class, right? As a product plugin. That'll contain how the cost of that product is worked out, which will then add all the items, all the quote items into a group to summarize its display. For instance, um, if you take maybe selling apples, right? You don't just have the cost of the apple you buy from whoever you're buying it from. You've also got the cost of transporting that apple. So what we're going to be able to do is define the parameters of how much that apple actually cost us and then being able to change the name of all the components of it into one line item called apples and set the price of that that is then based on our markup. Right? Which allows us to then plug this quote system into the future to be Python accounting system. And what we are then going to do is we're going to have a, a plugin in the quote system that interfaces with the products on the accounting system side. And it can pull in the actual cost of items. So this is a very small component of something that's very large at the end of the day. Okay, so we've got something cool as a company category, something cool product thing, chiggy. And then we need to get our item group working. Now, item group is going to be similar to the item so it's going to have a description 
it's probably going to have like all of these maybe it's going to be the same as a quote item it does inherit from a quote item which is even better but it's just going to total up what items are underneath it so maybe the section is a bit closer to what we need for that I think let's take the quote section copy all of that into the item group right and we've got members instead of items we need a name for this um name items is going to change to members members list of quote item group members each one is going to be passed to doplets quote item which is correct and this is going to be members missing attribute members uh, that's a stupid comment pass the group members 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 oh, all over the place would be nice if can we actually do a rename on this even better quote item group members quote name now the cost is going to be the cost of all of the members the total price is going to be the cost of all the members and quantity is going to be the now hang on a second um this is probably going to replace the markup on the item no it's not it's just going to take the totals from it so you set a markup based on each one of the quote items in a group. This is going to take the total cost and total price. And has quantity is actually... Okay, so now we need a quantity. We need to override a couple of things here. We need to override the quantity. Hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on just one second. This is inheriting from Doplet's quote item. So we already have a name. Or we actually have a description, not a name. Hmm. Well, that's going to be a little bit more complicated. It's inheriting. From this. Ha. Oh. Well, I suppose in this makes no sense. Actually, none of this makes any sense then. We have to start over. Okay, so we have a description. We have everything we sort of need. Um, let's just remove the commenting for now because we don't know what the fuck we're doing yet. Let's quote item. Uh, let's just fucking remove this as well. Okay. So how do we make this then? 
I suppose, how do we make this then into an item group? We then just need to change the, see the prices are gonna be worked out automatically. So we might need our own init function. Because all we need is a description and then we need the members. So we need a description. We don't need the cost. That's automatically calculated. Um, unit cost, markups. The markup we could actually have as a multi-level markup even. Ah, that might actually be quite nice to have. So markup we can have here. So we've got our own markup, our own description. We've got our own quantity, our own unit, and our own info. I think that makes sense. Now, items that are gonna be calculated based on the members is going to be the price, the total cost, actually unit cost. unit cost we need to get unit price uses unit cost with self markup multiplier which is fine we just need to grab the cost of the item then that's all we need to get is just the cost of the item everything else is calculated based on that one one thing Oh, let's fucking try and see what happens. So all we need to do is just override the cost. And for that, we are going to just copy this line. And shove you in here. And this is going to be members. Uh, yeah, hang on a second. We might actually not be able to do that. We need to take the members total price, which is after the markup has been applied. So if we have markup defined for a member item, it will take the price after the markup has been added. So this unit cost will add the markup for all the members together. Okay. Okay, and we can just copy items again. And we can shove that in here. And call this members. Quote item group members. Members. Why? Christmas Eve do I get so many emails it's crazy man okay quote item group members um quote item group unit cost and we need to add a note here the Unit cost is calcu calculated using the member total price, not the member total cost. This allows for multi-level 
markups or discounts to be applied at the item group level. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure we don't need a decimal by the sum. Because two decimals added to each other would equal a decimal, right? It's only on multiplication and division where we don't get a decimal back, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, this should be probably something like this. Unless we had a problem with that. Yeah, we did. So that return could be an int. Okay, no, 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 no. We add a decimal back there. That's why that's like that. Okay, so the unit cost of an item group is based on the total price of all of its members combined. And that total price includes the the markup multiplied or added onto the cost and multiplied by the quantity. Okay, so that should be good. So we got the cost and that cost is now going to be remultiplied with the markup for the item group, be it a positive or a negative amount. And we're going to automatically then get our total price, total cost times markup multiplier. We're going to get our total price for the item group. Uh, okay, okay. So the only thing we then need to add is just our, is just the members, which we can probably just get this. And we need to fucking test it out, man, somehow. To figure out how we can specify that as well. Um, so not items, this is going to be members. For member in kwogs members. And soft of members append quote item member. Okay, now we have to figure out how we are going to branch into an item group where we are currently just creating quote items. Hmm. Hey there, Moz UK, how's it going, mate? Isn't it like 10 a.m. there at the moment? Ah, oh, it's still morning, right? <laughs> 1033, yeah. Oh. Okay, so. There'll be an item that goes into a section. So maybe what we need to do is hmm ah sounds great got your brew and gonna put a couple of hours into learning go good old go right um to be loaded into a section. How are we going to? Hmm. We would actually have to see if the items has got members. If the item has members, we then call doc plates quote group. Another okay, aging it's... Intel motherboard is now supported by Coreboot for those wanting to free your system down to the BIOS. Oh, thank you, Kendra. Very informative as usual. Maybe what we can do here is if members in item
we then append docplets quote item group else we append docplets quote item right maybe maybe let's see if it crashes without even doing anything nope it looks good okay so now an example of what this is actually going to do um let's take quote four so we have got an item right can of beans plus water right now a member of this which means we don't even need a description anymore ah fuck it doesn't really make a difference um we got our beans right and our beans is going to cost us say 10 whatever currency we work in and we've got our water which is going to cost us two and we got a markup on this specific item say we got a markup on the beans of 50 percent markup on the water of 50 percent but can we add a minus here uh this is a percentage and it's a percentage added so can we then do like minus 10 i don't know let's do 100 percent here so that's going to be 15 plus 3 which is 18 and it should total up to 36 right and we're going to see how we can apply a discount <laughs> seeing as they're taking both items combined well it fucking actually just didn't throw an error it's even better quote four what do we have I didn't say it was supposed to be 36, right? We got one line item that contains both products called beans and water now. <laughs> beans and water, what the fuck? Okay, so... That's 15. Yeah, it is supposed to be 36, that's correct. Can we have a minus 10? What's that fucking going to show? It's probably going to fucking throw some crazy values out. You probably have to have an item called a discount. And instead of adding one, we remove the one from it. Well, we got 16, 20. And it's 10%, which is 80. It was 18. Does that even make sense? Hang on a second. Where is the calculator? uh that's 18 right minus 10 percent from 18 is going to be 1620 that's what we got <gasps> great stuff so we can add a discount now as well which is just a markup of minus like 10 percent so the normal markup for your beans is 50 normal markup for the water is 50 but seeing as you're taking both of them at the same time you get minus 10 and it comes up as one line item now what happens if we have a quantity of two We should probably change QTY to quantity to be to be honest. There we go. We got two at 1620, which is 30 to 40. Great stuff. Okay, so our item group is now working. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. I like that. And unit is gonna be can. Per can or per bucket a bucket of beans in order because why can't you buy it in a bucket right okay and we're going to just change all of our qty's to quantity
Bam. Uh, we probably need to change this over here as well. Some we already have quantity here. Oh fuck, we've also got has quantity. Ah. Uh, uh, let's change everything. And we probably have to change over here as well. Uh, uh, fucking change all. Just give me a second chat. Someone is fucking sending messages here. If only our company chat had all the Pepe emotes, it would be amazing. And Kendra's fucking killed the music again. God damn it, Kendra. Why do you do this? God damn it. Okay. So... It was not me. What? It was. Um, so we got our item group now, right? Maybe we can now document the item group. Um, and then we can start adding it into our class that can calculate that. Let's quote item group and we got a description why isn't the markup here that's weird well that is very weird we didn't fucking add it it's after unit price before quantity Sake. After unit price and before quantity. This is optional decimal, right? Optional decimal. Markup. Markup to apply to the unit cost. This thing is not really properly ordered here. This might have to go after quantity. Okay. We should probably also put here mockup to apply to the unit cost in percentage. Right? In percentage. EG10, whatever. Add a example. Okay. So, similar thing would then apply to our item group over here. And we've got a description. A unit, a quantity. We don't have the cost because the cost is calculated based on the members. We don't have a price because the price is calculated based on the members. Uh, 
um, we have a description unit quantity and markup description unit quantity markup and then we have members which is a list of any in this case well it's actually a fucking dictionary but might add support for other things later on um um quote item ah fuck um quote items that form part of this group takes the same structure used by class. i need to get a handle of how to specify these links um dot plates quote item we'll see when we throw this thing through sphinx and all the fucking shit is going to just throw up everywhere okay so we've now got a quote item group da -da -da. format everything to look nice oh god we got 40 fucking errors that's just madness What even is this for? Why are we passing this here again? We don't need to pass that there anymore, do we? Oh, we fucking do. Oops, we actually do need to pass that there, but why is that throwing a fucking error? Oh. Oh, because that can be none. Well, that kind of fucking sucks. Um, it's never gonna be none. Um I suppose the easiest may be is to fix what this is to being optional because it says optional here anyway and then over here um, if we have a from plugin if not plugin manager raise this be a value error probably right cannot use from plugin in top plates quote a plugin manager well I don't know make sure we have a plugin manager if we do ask all plugins for their quote sections passing section specification oh god there's so many comments everywhere jesus um oh no i see i expanded my window size past the bottom of my screen well that's probably not good oh shit that's a bit small you can see in chat i have to quickly fix the size here it i can blame Kendra because of that she was the re reason I had to resize it um, there we go there we go 
Okay. Robotic head, thanks a lot for the for the host, mate. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Very much appreciated. Hey, Nigel, we have a new follower. Thank you for following Aiden Bennett live. Thanks a lot for the for the follow there, Aiden Bennett live. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. And thanks again, Robotic Kid. Very much appreciated, mate. Um, okay, so that should still work, right? Why have we got so many errors still? What is going on here, man? Method init from base class is not called. We don't need to init the base class. Who needs a base class? We don't. Oh, we definitely do not want to init the base class. Um. Hmm. I wonder if we should just ignore that then. We have our own initialization, man. Um, I mean, the other way to solve this is to create one more class, which has only got the things that is the same between the two. What it actually differs here. I mean, The only things that we have, oh, we actually have a key error if unit cost is not provided, which we don't use down here. So we can just ignore the error. Um, what was that error anyway? It was super init not called. Well, we don't need you super init. Disable equal super. Oh shit, I can't even spell disabled right. Super init not called. Oh fuck, I can't even spell called right. What's going on? Okay, is there anything else obvious here? Should be placed before from. Okay, you your ordering is a bit fucked up. You can remove the plugin manager from here then, I guess. I don't know where that disappeared to. Um, but it is too complex. Well, yeah, we'll sort that out. It's not actually that complex, but anyway. Okay. So, this should still work, right? We didn't really make like any breaking change. And if we check that again. Hang on, did that actually just get opened or was that already open? Okay, a bucket of beans and water, right? Yeah, that's changed. Great. Okay, cool. So now if we were to return the quote information from our Python. Um, something that is super amazing in the beginning, right? Uh, I mean, uh oh. Do we have to create these ourselves now? We create the section ourselves. Uh, let's try something. Section items, right? Item one. Let's try and upgrade. 
awkward item. Um, and we can pass it a description. Fuck, that's even if. Description equals some item one with a unit price of 100. It's oh, for fuck's sake, why am I always pressing the wrong fucking keys? Item two. Going to be some item two, and it's going to be ten. And then we need to. You see, the problem that we have now is the group is built using keyword arguments. in the members and passing it to the class hey there set to or die um how's it going mate um we probably have to check if it's an instance of an item here. If is instance member, comma, okay, it's got item. Um, then we can just append it. Else. We need to pass it to the class to get an object and append the object. Well, that's probably not ideal. Unless we can do this. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. A little bit better. Or not. Um, well, actually not better. Uh, we can't change the value of member, can we? Hmm. 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 Oh, you know what we could do? You know what we could do here? So you could do this. That would sort of work. If the member is Object paint it how it is. Else create an object from it. Whatever. Okay. So now if we go back to our test over here, we should be able. to say members instead of a dictionary and put item one and item two right 
Maybe. Something's going to explode. Yep. Missing attribute items. Where's that? 284. 284 Oh shit was here before oh it had items okay that's probably what the problem is um items is a list but it's a list of dictionaries and this will be item one and item two okay okay uh, missing attribute description. Oh, it's not name, it's description. Why am I getting so many messages on my phone? Holy shit. Just give me a second chat. Give me a second. Okay. Oh my. Okay, great. Well, it didn't throw any errors this time. Probably just have to... There's item 1 and item 2. That is now coming from a class. class that is a bit messy but so we are creating the section the name and items with an item inside of the section called item one and item two with two members okay cool so now that pretty much means we can calculate components of a specific quote item we can add it to an item group which we can probably even create here now as well so we can now go item group one is equal to um plates item group and we can have a description which is going to be We do something like this description equals item one and item two and members equals a list of item one comma item two right and we should be able to replace this now with item group one But now I think it's not going to like that because it's expecting it to be a keyword argument. Yeah, it's not iterable. Okay, we will have to fix that then. If... Well... We have to then check if... <laughs> This is in the section, right? 
if is instance item comma dot plate item group then how the fuck do we do the other one? Oh my god, I've lost it. Oh no. Fuck. Ah, uh, must be up more. Hmm. Actually, now looking at it, I don't really like how this is. Um. It's harder to read when going fast through. We'd rather it just be fucking 20 gazillion lines longer. Okay. And then we can just fucking copy this shit and shove you in oh my oh my um maybe we can just do this instead um item obj equals item else if ah uh, this is has to be an is instance right if is instance item comma if it's a dictionary then if it's got members ah oh, for fuck's sake check if it's a dict alif Quote section. Quote section. Item must be a dict. Must be a quote, quote item or dict. Whatever. Here is go item obj is equal to let's quote item group item obj is equal to dot let's quote item and over here we go self dot items dot append item obj. Now, why are you giving an error, you fuck? Incompatible type assignment. Oh, you know why. You, my friend, are actually a doctorate's quote item. If you didn't already know that. Um, it'll always be... Can we just define it like that? Oh, great. Make my pie, pie, whatever, make my pie happy. Sad face. Okay. Well, it worked. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So now what we have here. I can't even remember what we had. There was this one over here, item one and item two, right? We created that now using a object. Okay, next we are going to 
create the section, which is probably going to be fucking simple as pi. We just go name something that is super amazing in the beginning. Oh, why do I keep getting those fucking pop ups? Items. Item group one. What have I done wrong? Ah, oh, we need an equals. We're not passing it a dictionary. We're passing it keyword arguments. Okay, delete. Oh fuck, we shouldn't have deleted that. Bam, bam, bam. All right, no more dictionaries. Oh, black, I actually preferred how I had it, not how you decided to reformat it, because this is not going to be so short in the future. Okay, so we got two items. Um, we probably can add a markup here. Oh, fuck's sake. Or maybe a cost. Cost markup equals, say, 10, 30%. And markup equals 30%. And then a markup equals minus 15%. Okay. So we've got item one, item two, which forms item one and item two. Applied GNU markup of city. Tyrannus has been released as a major update to this free software project for peer to peer communication and SIP based messaging. GNU Jamie is what previously started out as SF iPhone and then GNU Ring for initially being focused on soft phones. Okay, Kendra, thank you very much. Um, so we got item group one, which is contains the two items inside of it. We get a 15% discount on that. Um, we've then got them being added to a section and we append the sections that we are returning from the plugin and we return them. And all of that just from like A specification of oh we now need to grab the data to be able to change it so we're going to pass the data to the well we are actually passing the data to the thing so now we can add additional attributes that are handled by the by the product plugins themselves so for instance um, what we can do over here is we can say something like um, if data in section um, um, uh, I don't know let's just say speed equals one if data in section Let's just try something simple. If speed in section data speed equals section data speed. And then over here, let's just fucking throw speed in here as well. Okay. So would that now add it into our thingamajig quote over here? Let us see. Speed one, perfect. Okay, so now we're able to change attributes on a product that we're quoting for that's handled by a plugin. Okay. 
I think that's a good thing. Where the fuck was that now? Oh, it was in the plugin itself, right? Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. Now, how are we going to go from here? Um, we have got the quote, we got sections in the quote, we got items in the sections, we got item groups in the sections, we've got our quote, we got then the totals that can be displayed at the end. Let's just check if the totals are correct as well. So we got one five nine one three. One five nine one three. One five nine one three. It is being added correctly. Okay. Um let's add a quantity for testing purposes. Uh, we can add a quantity to the group. Let's add a unit. Um, I don't know, what can we call this? Um, per bucket. <laughs> and we're going to ha have a quantity of three um i'm hey there radio signal how's it going mate um there's some info on it as as much as i could write up fast it's basically a a document templating system that templates a latex and html and you can generate pdfs from that so the pdf i have at the moment may seem very simple right i've actually removed all of the branding and everything that's at the that is at the top over here i've removed there is a there is a background image as well there's also things on the side um i've removed all of that for the testing i'm doing at the moment but it actually looks a, a lot more interesting than what you just see over here. This is only a very small portion of it that I've removed everything from. For instance, we have things like, um, I got QR codes as well, although I can't open that text file at the moment because it has some, um, some information in that shouldn't be in there. And there's a there's a there's a stamp as well that actually creates a stamp at the bottom right end of the page that is completely randomized. What is the end goal? So BW Merlin, um, I'm replacing a Perl and template toolkit system that I think is about a hundred thousand lines of Perl and template toolkit at the moment. Now that specific system plugs into our accounting package and it's used to generate invoices. Um, it plugs into our document templating system that is used to generate every single communication message that the company sends out in terms of legal agreements, proposals, quotations, um, letters, um, notices, um, that system is actually also used to generate um, salaries every month as well. It's got a Perl plugin that has got all these salary calculations and it pulls it in from a um, from a JSON file as far as I know. And it does all the calculations for salaries. It pulls in all the time sheesh. Um, sheets and everything it generates a summary that is sent through to our accounts department and then it generates salary slips for every employee so it's used throughout the company's 
that I have. Now, one of our suppliers changed the way in which their product is being, um, I would not say built, but the they've re they've released a product to change a product that they have. So they have a product at the moment and they're notorious for instead of reducing the the fee of a product to bring out one more instead with more restrictive terms and conditions. So they brought out a new product with more restrictive terms and conditions with a whole bunch of 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 business rules that surrounds it and also a whole bunch of quirks that they do not tell you about in the legal documentation. Um, so instead of me trying to rewrite about, I think it's like 20 or 30,000 lines or so of template toolkit that's used to build a quote based on a specification, um, I would rather opt to rewriting the templating system in Python, adding support for quotations and having Python build the quotation based on a specification instead. Um, to rewrite it in template toolkit will probably take me even longer. Um, it isn't the easiest thing to do a complex calculation of cost prices um, um, and components of a service that it would be to do it inside of Python. So I'm pretty much rewriting a portion of our document templating system in Python instead of in Perl. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing at the moment. So the end goal is to being able to generate a quotation based on a complex specification um, that's pretty much the only thing that I actually need at the moment um, that's the end goal and then obviously to be um, to make it open source as well that's correct um, well you might actually laugh but our accounting system currently pulls in information from a, from a Git repository and it generates invoices and shit based on that. Um, it does not do quotations at the moment. So the accounting system was originally written in like 2001, 2002, up until about 2007 or so. Um, and it is responsible for doing some quite complex calculations based on services being sold, um, like prepaid, postpaid, um, being paid for the current month. Um, and it's quite, um, it's quite manual at the moment in how it does that, but it interfaces with um with the templating system or a version of it um and it's got its own latex template that it applies and then it pulls in our branding from some other repositories and then it builds the invoices and statements and everything it sends out based on those but going ahead in the future um, I need I need to rewrite that as well at some stage to be a web-based interface. Um, at which time we will then add the quotations to the web-based interface as well. Um, yes, it was. I designed that system as well, and it's passed audits for the past like twenty years, so. It is designed properly. <laughs> it's one of the things I definitely do not enjoy to do at all. But there's no real choice we have apart from using it. The billing for the services that we're providing is involved. Um, it's got like a minimum commitments. Um, it's got tiers of of discounts based on volumes 
Um, yeah, it's an involved system, sadly. Okay, so what else do we need here then? Sounds like you did a good job, but 20 years and things change, you learn new and better. Exactly, exactly. So I've pretty much learned quite a few things over 20 years. Um, I designed accounting systems for quite a few organizations as well that's based partly on the code from that specific system. Um, and from them, I've also learned a few things too. Um, I've also spoken to quite a cu couple of auditors and everything. Um, we generally deal with a few auditors, uh, or we used to deal with quite a few uh, auditors in terms of when we designed a software solution for a for for a large organization, um, and they pretty much handed a set of test data imported into the system to their auditors to ensure that everything was being done correctly but there are quite a few things that can be done even better i completely agree there it should have been the web interface from day one but i'm actually glad that i didn't add a pearl based web, web interface back then um Pelash Amasi should actually see the real one it is a bit better hang on let me see if i can get an example I might have a blurred example of one. You'll be quite surprised. It is actually a bit better than that. It's got a few more cool things added. Uh, let me just check. I think I posted it onto, onto Discord somewhere. Just give me a moment. Um, let me just quickly browse here and see if I can find it. I'm pretty sure no I don't seem to have one there yeah I don't have any sample of it at the moment um it's so full of information and everything um with all the branding and the background images and shit um is there a particular reason you're using latex yes there actually is um latex is the only thing that i found where you can actually import a pdf as an image and it's imported into the document itself and if you use it in five or six places or so it uses the single copy of that pdf image everywhere so you don't increase the pdf sizes um i did add support for wheezy print as well which is HTML to PDF, but it can't import um, PDF images into the, into the document itself. So what we also do, right, um, it may not be obvious, but um, if you're doing like a 200 or 300 page proposal for an organization, they generally after like evidence of licensing they are after evidence of company registration and everything now what happens at the moment is is a template for each component of data that could that is generally asked for so what we can do in the templates when we're actually doing a proposal of that size is in template toolkit there's a that you can use to import a um, that you can use to import a template so we can basically just import each one of those templates that have been created with all the supporting documentation that could be required and bam you have about 120 pages already so in a general proposal we would send out we do about 300 pages or so and at least two-thirds of it is supporting documentation evidence um, proof um, designs and everything and quite a bit of the time all of those are exactly the same so all we have to do is we go through the requirements that they have we then just import each one of the templates that provide for those requirements 
requirements we then have a section at the big at the big at the beginning of the of the document which refers to the section um, um names of each of those pieces of information um and you basically run it through the through the templating system and you end up with like two to th three hundred pages or so of all the information that they're after and seeing as using um the the labels and references inside of inside of inside of latex um it automatically creates links to all the pages and everything um i'd say that latex is absolutely um amazing with what you can do the graphs you can add the images that you can create and everything compared to pretty much everything else i've seen i think the only thing that came the closest to that would be would be would be wheezy print with um html it is probably pr pronounced they tech but it's a bit harder for me to pronounce it that way I hate getting quotes and people give me the total rather than a breakdown for each item. I want to know if you are taking a piss on products. Exactly, man. So, for instance, um, the product that I want to quote on at the moment, um, the fiber network operator sends three values through to you. They send a setup fee. They send a... A monthly fee and then they send a slight broken down portion of it which has got the access fee or so now um what we're going to be doing here i'm just not sure if we're going to be able to do that today i just have to think how i can um stream the data that i have to input without it breaking any of the nda that we have with them so i'd probably have to use a different name for everything and a different value for all the pricing and everything but when i do that um we'll be calculating all of the components of the service i think um i don't have a quote open anymore but i think there's about five or so um um there's about five or so comp components of it and they only normally provide you two out of all the five so it's pretty hard to um it's pretty hard to for a client if you send two quotes with two with two different specifications to compare them and see which part of the quoted value is actually increasing based on your changes what lib are you using Pilatex? nope um i've wrote the latex interface myself over here it's just a ginger well it's just a plugin um that's got a basic ginger filter to do escaping and then i call gin um, i call latex myself over here using latex mk i don't use pi i think i did look at pi at Pi latex. Let me just quickly check that again. Just give me a second. Uh, where's my browser gone? Yes, Pi latex. I think there's a reason why I didn't use that. Oh my! A hundred and forty emails saying, um, saying, Merry Christmas, from the same person. What on earth is going on? Anyway, um, Pied Latex for creating and compiling Latex. Uh, okay, that's all good and well. Uh, yeah, this I don't think could work for me. Um, I mean, you could add stuff to the preamble. I'm not entirely sure. Let me just quickly check the source of that. Uh, Tixie's rule, what do they do here? Adding nodes and shit. Um, GitHub Pilatex. I want to see how they build the, how they build the document. Because you can't just call... I'm, I'm, 
can't just call latex if you're doing pre-processing. I want to just see if they've got a renderer here somewhere. We need one of these two. Um, oh no, they're doing it correctly. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't actually think that this would work for me though. Um, I don't need to add anything inside of Python. Um, it basically just, it's just basically taking a template, which is already created and creating a PDF out of it. Um, we don't need any of this functionality. And I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm one that does not like to add third party dependencies wherever, wherever, wherever possible at all. Wasn't me who sent that many. Or, oh, uh, I actually don't think it was you, I hope. Let me see who it was now. I don't know, but they've sent it to every fucking email address they could find. Some computer company. Man, I must say that New Year's, Christmas, and some of the other sort of holidays or so, I get so many fucking emails. Every 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 person and their and their dog feels the need to send an email to say to say Merry um to say Merry a merry happy fucking holiday or so it just starts to get a bit tedious after a while i don't need you to all just say the same thing over and over it's the same like a few days ago um i mean okay do not think me wrong for 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 saying um for for saying merry this happy, but happy holiday Merry, yeah, merry, happy, crappy holiday. But if um, if someone passes away and someone sends it to a pretty large mailing list, um, notifying the mailing list that someone passed away, every person on that fucking mailing um, on that fucking mailing list or so has to send a reply to pretty much say the same thing. And if it's if it's like a thousand people or two thousand people man i don't want to receive that i'm terribly sorry that the person passed away but fuck waking up in the morning to like nine thousand emails is not great um i don't know i don't know that's just my thoughts on it and then to wake up in the morning with like 9,000 emails plus all the merry happy crappy holidays it's even it's even worse um, and then also to wake up in the morning over and above that every IT company is saying that this system is um, that saying that this system isn't affected by the by the Apache log for J vulnerability is even worse Microsoft sent me 2,000 plus emails once. They had an issue with their logging system. They got itself stuck in a loop. <laughs> Lol. Crazy, man. Okay. Um, got our Wheezy print our latex over here. <laughs> Log4j. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, um, the other thing that we needed to do was per... Um, was projects so a project is calculated slightly differently let me just try and pull up an example um, do I have an example that I can just fucking share here just give me a second to find something that I can just copy and paste that hopefully has not got anything too crazy in it um give me a secchi um okay 
and that's the source of it. Let me just grab the latex for that. I just have to replace a couple of values probably. Okay, that'll work. That's some fucking crazy device thing that someone wanted something to happen to. Um, let me just copy that latex block and then we can see what it looks like. Um, where on earth is that block now? Um, just give me a sec here. Uh, um, let me just remove some values and change some names. Um, and remove file names. Those file names shouldn't be displayed. Um, project and remove. Oh my, there's so many places that, oh my. Give me a second just to um, block out some of these items that shouldn't be shared publicly. And then I'll copy and paste the um, delay text and you can see what it actually looks like. Um, just got to remove this as well. Those are percentages. I'm just changing values. Okay. So, this was actually for a BDCOM OLT, which is some sort of a fucking fiber device thing in Majigi. That someone wanted us to do some stuff with. Um, um, you just remove a few more small things from this. Okay, I think that that might actually be good. And I just need to remove this. Okay. I fucking hope that this has not got anything confidential in it. I don't think so. Just got BDCOM OLT and a time value and some fake pricing. Okay, if I copy that and we check what that looks like. Um, let us shove it over here. project. I hope that that has got everything blocked out. I think it looks good. Okay, so one of the reasons why we have to calculate um, things for quotation is this over here. So this is basically going to calculate um, the price of a, of a time-based project that we would spend time and various resources on to, um, to 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 deliver to a client now over the past like couple of well over the past like 10 years i've slightly improved upon this and we now have something which looks like this over here although very rough uh, i think something got chopped off at the end but anyway, so it looks like this over here. So this is actually pulled from a project that a client was um, was quoted on, but I've changed the per the pricing and everything and some values there. But we have a project breakdown with a section. Um, the section can be like various things that they want to have happen. And then the description of what has to have happened there's normally a, pro a proposal that well it no no i changed the pri well i actually 
I actually wish it was it was that high. But I've changed the pricing on it. Um, so there's normally a um, there's normally a proposal above here and possibly even above the section itself. And then there's a project breakdown that's got the description of all the main things that have to have happen. And then there's a service that has got a price associated with that per hour. Then um, it isn't. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> that's just an example. <laughs> I actually wish it was that amount, but it's not. Um, then one of the things that we saw, <laughs> one of the things that we saw was um, quite a few of the contractors that we used in the past used the term days instead of hours. I'm just not sure if we'll be doing that going forward or so, but you have the description of what has to happen. You got the service that will be provided. You got the time it'll take to do it and then and then the and then the totals block below that there is generally other things added so autom automatically we generally add the testing that is generally a percentage based of how much the of how much the total time on the project would be at its own at its own rate per hour there's also project management as well generally that is also based on either i don't know if it's either the value of the of the project at the end of the day or the amount of time it'll take there's then some other items like um if it's a development project we generally use a lab to deliver um um to deliver the, the, the deliverables for that for so there would be a lab cost added at the end based on any coding that is required um, and that would also have a price as well because I mean if we get a client that wants us to um, to develop a piece of software that runs within a specific and environment generally we would be able to simulate that environment on our side but that isn't free we obviously pay either a cloud provider or um, it would be our only equipment that we use for that and there's a cost associated with it so there's some other items that are automatically added depending on the service that is used um, and if that service requires other resources um so this over here um if it was a job for like programming or so it might have a few a few more items and i'll obviously say the the level of the programmer required to do that um one of the things that i would also enjoy to add is quite a few clients do not fucking understand the terminology like unit testing they don't know what that is or what that means or so so we need possibly to have some sort of a form in future that they fill out to say i want my code tested beforehand i do not want my code tested beforehand and things like um things like a maintenance and everything because they are for something to be developed in like three years down the line they then complain and shout and scream that's that something isn't um, isn't working anymore and expect you to fix it for free and then um they complain about the price of a a yeah push to production <laughs> and then they complain about the price of a quotation or so but they don't understand that if you're working on something like a mission critical system you need a continuous integration and continuous deployment system of some sort so every change you make to the code base itself is being tested out before it's going to be deployed into into production so i had a 
pretty large organization come to us and ask for a feature to be added to their systems, right? Um, and it was a system that controls hundreds of thousands of users. Um, a certain service that those users require to be able to consume the service that they provide. So if there was any problem whatsoever with the software that we wrote for that, you're then talking about hundreds of thousands of, of, of users that we call the various support centers. Now, there's no way that I'm going to just throw up like Visual Studio code, create a single Python file and write that solution for them in four, five hours or so. There's absolutely no way because if anything happens, who will they blame? They'll blame us because we broke whatever fucking service they have. So they obviously expect everything to be for free and they do not understand why it is so expensive um, for something that sounds extremely simple to them to be created. Um, so at some stage in the future, I think that we need some sort of an online form where they can fill out. Okay, um, I actually have one somewhere. I just don't know where that form is. Um, where it asks them various questions like, do you want your software tested out um, after every change that is... Um, every change that is um, um, made and everything and then how many users will depend on your software and shit like that so from our side we can understand the sort of impact on the on the business that they have would be if that service were to break because at the end of the day we offer 100 percent guarantee and 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 a hundred percent uptime for the software that we deliver and if something breaks or so we can then just point them over here and say but you didn't want any testing at all you said you'll be testing it yourself sort of thing so you can pay fifty dollars or so but you aren't going to be expecting the software tomorrow and it wouldn't add and it for never to to have any bugs. How big is the Latex installation on the server? Um, late. Oh, well, actually, probably pretty fucking big, to be honest with you. Um, I think that I've I've got quite a couple of Latex things installed. It's probably about two, probably about two G or so. Um, BW Merlin. Um, I own an ISP, yeah, I suppose you could say that I work for one as well, but um, I primarily design software and solutions, I'd say. Credit union websites probably need the stuff all the time. Yeah, they probably do. Now, a very funny thing is, there is one telecommunications provider Fighter that's got about 30 million clients, right? Okay, consume the 30 million there. Their billing system is fucked. Absolutely fucked. They have one person in charge of it, right? It is written as far as I know in Java. They got one person in charge that's got a team of juniors that basically makes changes to this system. So, well, the amount of disputes that we have with that is absolutely unbelievable. Can I learn Python within a month? Um, depends what you classify as, as actually learning. Whether you'd be able to print um, something like Hello World, I'm sure, you can probably do that in a few minutes or so. No, there's no way you can do that in a in a month. Uh, 
Um, okay, so where were we? We need to do projects next. So at the basics of the project, we probably have to copy over our quotes into projects now. It's not going to be the same. Um, however, a project needs to be able to get displayed in a block. In a block like this. Hmm. Um, Visual Studio Code isn't bad at all. And if you're doing Python, it has the great feature of you being able to use something like a Jupyter Notebook, where you can try things out, like test equals one, two, three, and print test. And you can just run shit like that. And it can also do like graphs and everything as well. So I find it pretty useful, but I'm sure that there's other things that are, um, there's other things out there that can probably do the same thing. It just works with me the best. Okay. So. Linter 5, how could you recommend that man? I mean, does it have things like, um, okay, so it probably has syntax highlighting, right? But does it have like, um, like, um, like, um, linting as well, where it'll tell you all the, sh all the things you're doing wrong, like this. It says that my function is missing a return annotation. I mean, if I can do that, it would be great. Um, not really. The parser won't tell you if you if you are missing a return annotation. If you're using things like like Python and typing, it isn't an error. It's a warning. <clears throat> um, radio, um, everyone uses Python, <laughs> um, almost all of the code that we have is in Perl, sadly enough, but trying to find programmers for Perl is almost Im Im impossible these days. <laughs> I thought you were joking. Yeah, finding Perl programmers is, is a very hard thing to do. I use Python, C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript, etc. It depends what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the main reason people don't like Perl is for one, people enjoy to use the most complicated way possible to do things in Perl. It isn't easy to understand what the fuck is going on. I mean, I always use the one example. Um, if we go to something like, um, if we go to something like... This is a very good example of why I absolutely hate Perl. Um, we are looking for... Um, what the fuck is that thing called now? Um, soap light. Why I want everything changed away from Perl, I will show you shortly. Because I can't deal with this when a client is... Oh wait, this is not what I'm looking for. I'll show you why.
Should probably search for pearl here. Okay, this is probably what we're looking for. And we are looking for transport HTTP. Now, when you are trying to find a bug, right? And you're very sure the bug is in the API or the, or the library that you're using. And you've just spent like hours trying to track that shit down. And you come to something which looks like, as soon as I find it, I'll show you. I'll show it was an HTTP. If you then come to summing, I mean, we could even just take the first fucking block here as an example. If you come to something which looks like this, right? Just, just, uh, it, I mean, you don't want to be seeing this when you provide an SLA to a client and he says that there's a problem or a bug and now you're trying to figure out, okay, what, what the fuck is dollar sign underscore two supposed to be with absolutely no information or documentation at all? Uh, so what, what does one do? You know, you start crying because <laughs> fuck. But that isn't the worst. There's an even worse part here that I have personally had to track through. Or drowned through. I was so sure it was in the HTTP section here. But it was absolutely crazy, man. And they sort of wonder why people don't want to use Perl anymore. It's because the developers that use it don't think properly. <laughs> Maybe it was in one of these other things. I mean, it's great. It has like um, a coverage test and everything just like any other language there we go there's one more great set of examples now i have a bug with qualify how am i going to fucking fix that you know how much brain power it takes for me to try and pass what the fuck is going on here it's painful that's why i've spent like I don't know, I've been using Perl for like nearly 20 years or so, probably like um, from actively from like 1999 or so all the way through to like um, two th uh, 2000 and maybe 19. So like 20 years. And when someone showed me well written Python, along with a coverage analysis and unit testing um, and how much something like VS Code can be used. I switched over. I mean, Python is just so much easier. Um, BW Merlin, this code isn't mine. My code has got comments everywhere. Well, there are comments in Perl, but the people that write Perl don't believe in comments, it appears. I mean, if you take my code versus, um, versus this over here, we just think of some fucking package I have. Um, um, what do I have that's written in Perl that I can like display nicely? Um, maybe we can find something. Um, let me show you. 
So here is your here is what a, um, a typical piece of code would actually look like that you would find, right? Now, how I would write Perl is probably slightly different. Let me just find something that is written in Perl. Um, probably this radio server might be a good example. Um, let us go into... Um, I don't know if requests would have something that I did. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now, do you see that there's a bit of a difference here, right? This is what my code looks like, right? Variables are named. There's comments. And you can sort of like, you know, read what the fuck is going on. Meanwhile, you take your typical Perl programmer, generally, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to generalize every one into the same group here, but majority of the programmers that I've seen that, that would basically write Perl, write Perl like this. So you, there's a bit of a difference here. This is why I hate Perl. I hate it because I mean if someone's shouting and screaming on the other line or so that there's some problem in their software and something isn't working or some report is incorrect and then you end up in a function like this that is providing the incorrect result what are you going to do it's just painful it's 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 painful and it's expensive if you're providing an SLA I must say that Python is easy. You can generally find people that know how to program um, that know how to program in Python. It forces indentation. That I mean, at first I would have thought that that would be bad, but it's actually pretty amazing. Um, there's tools like black that can be used to automatically format everything so I don't have to try and make my entire document um, look pretty or have any kind of fucking um, formatting style defined I can just throw a right click and click format document and there we go you can then add black to your to your to your unit testing as well, where if any developer you have um, writes code that they don't pass through black first, it can throw an error. Um, you can then do the same for things like Pylint that I use as well. Um, Flake, although I don't think I use Flake anymore. I use Py Codestyle and Py and PyDoc style because there was some sort of an error in Flake. Um, but you have all of these very interesting linting error messages that you can that you can configure or so. And if you're okay with how they want your code to be written, it's great. You can just fucking enable everything. And if anyone writes code that does not look pretty it can just throw an error and refuse to emerge um, so I don't have to worry about styling or anything I don't have to worry about complaining at people for adding the doc strings because I have tools that complain about that for me yeah there's pretty much only one way to write it um i find that pretty useful i mean if um there are some public repositories i have that have got some contractors we've used and on some of them there's over 100 comments that i've made on a single merge request about all the formatting errors and that was when they used Perl and php um we actually have a code styling document that explains how everything um, has to be formatted for Perl, and they just couldn't get that into their head and there's hundreds and hundreds of c c comments where i say please fix this please fix that please fix this now with python 
um, I can have tools do that for me. So I don't have to do that anymore. So it saves quite a quite a bit of time on my side as well. But yeah. Um, so one of the things that we need to do here then is the time-based projects. Which you probably need to copy quotes for. Um, I think we've done most of this. We've commented on everything-ish, except we haven't commented on this. We probably have to add some examples as well. We will do that when we add it to Sphinx. <clears throat> Need everything nicely commented with examples and shit. Okay, so we got our item group. That has been sorted out. Now the thing is, how are we going to add um, time-based items to the quotation and have a summary at the end? Um, unless we can combine it or something, we can have a quote item that is called like time. But then again, the title in the columns are different. This is completely different. Um, if we check a quote collection, what does that use? Because it would be a collection that would have to display it. And the collection needs Total cost and total price. Okay. Total cost and total price. Hmm. I wonder, isn't there something in Python now called protocols? Let me just check if we can use the new Python protocols for this. Um, Python 3.8, that should, shouldn't be too bad. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and our cheers to any end of year celebrations you may partake in. The daily original content what? on Pharonix will continue each day just as it has ah. been for years without any single day interruption but there is also a holiday Pharonix premium special for those wanting to help cap <laughs> off 2021 and help ensure a successful 2022 for continued Linux benchmarking, performance testing, hardware reviews, and open source news. What? Kendra, the fuck is going on? Where the fuck is the Python protocol? Is it 544? It's the pep that includes the... Yeah, it's the protocol over here, right? Is this one of the published ones? There's a Python protocols thing. Yeah, it's a standards track. Okay, so... We need to define a protocol and then just define that it has got the um, the the methods that we need. Right. So 
from typing import protocol and then we just fucking define it like this. That might work. Okay. Plushmaster, I don't fucking know. She's got her own ideas and stuff. It's Kendra version 2. Her entire API was changed and, and, and things, you know. She's been acting a little bit weird. Just a little bit weird. Wait a minute, we can't just add it over here because... Actually, we can. We can just fucking add it over here, why not? Let us add protocol, right? And then we are going to define a... Um, operates quote protocol and the only things we need the only things we are going to need is going to be total cost and total price I think that's all the collection uses. Total cost and total price. Yep. Uh, total cost, total price, and total tax. We need tax as well, I guess. Total cost, total price, and total tax. Cost, price, total tax. Cost, price, um, and tax. Right. Um, these methods, the this functionality. Okay. I did read about protocols. I'm pretty sure this is how you're supposed to use it. So we're going to have two completely different classes that do, that do not inherit or anything from each other. Implement a quote protocol, right? Which according to this, wherever it was well according to this somewhere we should be able to specify the protocol instead of a quote now to our collection so if we go to our collection over here instead of a quote I think we can use let's quote protocol Ah, 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 maybe, 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 maybe. I assume this is how it should work. How many errors do we have? Ah, ah maybe it's going to work. Oh, what we also need is a name. Yeah, no errors. Nice. So we just need something that's compatible with the protocol to be passed to the collection. List of quotes for the collection. 
these need to be compatible with document um class documents quite critical okay so that gives us oh for fuck's sake i didn't switch back to this okay so anyway what we have over here is a protocol instead of a class instead of one of the classes we have and the protocol defines what we need to pretty much be compatible right so we need a name as well i think we just need a name here and maybe yeah we just need a name we don't really need anything else and we don't need any code in it okay so we just define a couple of properties well this is the first time i'm trying it as well and i believe i've actually found a use where it can be something that i would actually want to use so now um so i i think the only actual purpose of it would be would be to make two classes compatible with each other when you're using linting so like i have pylint and everything enabled at the moment um i would suppose that normally if you aren't using if you aren't using typing you can just use whatever classes and objects you please you don't have to worry but if you've added typing to everything um i now have got a bunch of quotes and i want two classes to be compatible with each other so we can create a protocol that defines the the, the minimum requirements that a class should have before it would be compatible with the protocol and then we can just use the protocol instead of the class everywhere and with that you then don't have to inherit from a parent and we don't have to use union either because this specific plugin does not know about the one we're about to create but the one we're about to create is going to use the one that we have at the moment so we're just going to copy the entire quotes add-on and call it projects and then we're going to do, deliver a quote that is compatible with the protocol. Um, I think we see you do not even have to do any inheriting at all. No inheriting required and it'll still pass your linting which is exactly what we want to do. So it's the first time I've ever used protocol and it seems to work nicely. Okay, so I need to just quickly grab something to drink before I die of thirst here. I will be right back. Just give me a few minutes.
Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. Um, so what are quotes in this case? It's not about text or quoting someone. It's more like stock quotes. Sorry, I don't know any other meanings of the word quote. Um, okay, so we've got two things that we can do. One is we can quote on something that appears to be a product or a service, right? Which would be something like... Um, which would be something like beans and water um, that you would then be quoted on per bucket with a quantity at the per item rate and then it and then a total on the line right now what happens if you're providing a product like this and a service to install your beans and your water for instance um, if we take this over here that was sort of half pulled from somewhere else um, single mode fiber connections inside of a data center, um, you would have a monthly fee for that, right? Now there's no way to add a setup fee on this single block. So you can display that here is your, here is your non-recurring or one or fees. And here's the fees that you pay monthly. So what we have is you can now create two quotes where the one you can have is your monthly fee, right? Which would be all these sections over here. So they, they, they would, there could be like a single mode fiber, one gig port for a specific company, and then maybe a second company that you're selling a port for and then there would be a commitment or so of how much bandwidth you have to do um, um that you would have to do a minimum every month over that or you can just basically quote on the speed now the second block that we have over here would be like the install fee um in pretty much all cases that i'm aware of you would have some sort of a setup fee which is how long it would take you or the supplier in terms of time to set the thing up and then they basically charge you a fee on that or it would be a once-off fee um, for whatever service or so that they're offering. Um, with these two blocks, what we can now do is we could specify a, co a collection of them over here. So think of like day one as being the non-recurring or or setup fee and day two being the recurring fee so now you can specify proposal totals where you total all the quote blocks that you have throughout say five or ten pages in a single area you could then add a table of contents as well so we can actually add one over here. I'll show you what this will actually look like. Um, just give me a second to, to figure that out. Just give me one, one moment and then I'll explain how the, how the other type of quote would fall in line with that. Just give me a second. I'm just copying and pasting some shit from somewhere else. Um, where is my table of, ah, here we go. Oh, it's even easier than I thought it would be. Now, is this going to paste the correct thing? Yes, it is. Okay. So what we can do, um, uh, where are we going to fucking add this? Let's add it over here. This is a stupid proposal. Get it now while it's hot. Okay. So. You've seen the bl the blocks that we have, right? Oh shit, that was the wrong thing to run. This is sort of how one of our proposals would look, sort of. So you would have some sort of introduction here with a brief overview of 
whatever else. You would have the table of contents over here. You can see I've spent quite a bit of work on sort of making it look quite nice over here. So all of these you can now click on as well, which looks pretty cool. And what a client would generally do is depending on whichever department this would go through, you would have say part one that might be the technical description of it. And then you would have part two that would be all the totals and everything. So generally you would have the technical team go through part one, check everything is fine. And then the only part that their finance team would actually need is a part with all the totals on like this over here. They would generally then just print this page out for them. They would approve it and they would create an order or so. Um, now, the second thing I was saying is it's all good and fine if you're quoting on a service or an installation for your server. But what happens if you're quoting on work that you're going to be doing? Now, it's easy enough to say that, hey, we're going to provide a a a technician at a specific rate per hour. Now, there are other things of why we have this automatically calculated, and that is we add in a project a management fee because um, if you've got a project manager, their time to overlook a, pro a project or so, it isn't free to you. You actually have to pay them at the end of the day. So we, when we do the projects over here, what we're probably going to have is something similar to project management or a type of the thing that you can add into the total block that is based on either the project cost or the amount of time it'll take to complete that. Because generally a project manager would spend a, I would not say it's a fixed portion of the time for a, a project on following it up, but generally they would follow it up a few times every day or say, or depending how long the project is going on for, maybe, uh, maybe once a day or, or say once a week or so. So you would, um, do you have to worry about individual sections being on one page of the document, like for example, the total section? Not really, no. Um, so depending on how many things you've added, these may span more than one page. So I think we have a proposal that we sent like a year or so ago that filled up an entire page on the setup fees and an entire page on the on the monthly fees. Just pretty much detailing everything so they can have a sort of a breakdown of what they're paying for. And then obviously if they need to look at that in more detail, they can then go to that specific s section or so. What would be nice is if we could actually add the is if we could actually add the the links over here to the sections themselves that shouldn't be too hard to do we can look at doing that and actually i can add it to our to-do list that might be a good idea now ignore the to-do list we have over here we can just move all of that down that is my plan of integration and everything. So this is how the thing is integrated into our other systems. It's involved, as I said earlier. So um, what we need to do is um, add link in quote total section to section of pricing. So we can probably easily add that. That I don't think will be a problem to add. But anyway, um, so where was I? Um, so for instance, in the very beginning, we just quoted on how much you would pay, say, a um, single or a 
team of programmers to complete a specific task or so and then i saw a majority of the of the contractors that we use added in more costs and i thought to myself but hey there are actually more so it generally isn't just the programmers that are working on a specific client it would be um someone that is in charge of, of actually managing the project itself it might be the salesperson it may be a dedicated project manager or so now you paying them right their salaries and everything and they're spending time working on the on the project but the client isn't paying for that they're only paying for the programmers themselves so we need a way to add things in automatically um which would be added to the project totals at a reasonable value there is a lot of work to make a document like this um yes so i think it took me about three months to do the late text itself on the template that we use so this over here as i said earlier i i, I don't know if you were here but on on the template that we use ourselves right we actually have branding on the first page there's about i'd say about this much of the first page has got um and has a has a logo um it has a company name it has something in the side of a block i wonder if i can actually find that hang on i actually i absolutely have to find this now um i'll show you what that looks like um I think there's another place where I have that and it is an example of latex just give me one moment I'll show you what our actual thing has but yeah um, I think the the the, um, the latex of it took about three months to do and then the quotes and everything was over a span of years um it isn't something that was added all at once like i'm trying to do at the moment it's something that has been there for quite a while or that has been actually worked on for quite a while but here we go i think i have an example here ah here we go okay cool now you can't see too many details on it which is what i was hoping for check at this this is what it actually looks like it might have changed slightly since then to become a bit better but that's what it looks like over there so that's the actual template that we use and you can see there's something that sort of resembles a quote block one of the very first versions of it so it basically builds the i'm um, the documents like this over here it looks quite nice and then one of the other things that um that isn't too easy to do with the pearl system that we have at the moment but is a lot easier to do with the with the with the python system is swapping out the branding so what we're going to have is we're going to have branding for the different sort of business units or the companies that we have and you'll be able to swap the branding out so if you need to create a proposal very fast and you've done a similar a similar proposal for one of the other clients of one of the other business units or so you can then just swap the branding out so it'll regenerate everything but with a completely different branding on the page so that's what our branding actually looks like at the moment except i think some things have been improved um but yeah that took about three months to do just the layout of it how that is at the moment um and i've hired quite a few people to actually assist with that that was i'm not entirely all me i did majority of the templating of it and then any of the problems that i was unable to solve i then um, I then basically hired I think two or three professors or so that were quite well educated in terms of finding issues and f and fixing latex issues 
and they solved s s some of the other things. <laughs> like, as soon as you start displaying stuff at certain positions on the page, and you start including, like, from page two on and everything, there's some quirks, right? Like, one of the problems that they solved, if I switch back to our template over here, I don't, uh, that branding is blank at the moment, but there's a lot of provision here for some of the other things like, oh shit, I don't actually think it's in here. So um, the style on page one, right? The actual shit that goes inside of this section, um, each one of those lines had to have a percent sign at the end of it. So that was one of the issues that I had, that I had to hire someone to try and figure out why things weren't displaying properly. And over here as well. Um, that's the footer box that's displayed at the bottom of the pages. And that had to have a percent sign as well at the end, else this display is all fucked up. So yeah, um, it did take quite a while to do that. But hopefully I can um, I can actually provide a decent template with maybe some mock-up um, branding and everything for for others to use this. So you don't have to go through all the pain that I went through. So out of the box or so, you would then have these pretty looking sections and everything. And you'd have sort of a Kaylee. <laughs> I'm looking quotes and stuff like that. Yeah, that's my sort of plan, you know? Um, okay, so... It's the time. I unfortunately need to go in like 14 mi minutes or so though. But we can quickly see what we can do with this. So what we're going to need is we're going to need another plugin. Um... And this is going to be maybe add on quotes proposals. Kind of depends on the quotes. Or not proposals, quotes, projects. Right, so we just copied that entirely. Um, this needs to change. is going to be quotes projects oh, let me just quickly delete some a few mails here just give me a sec okay um Let's quotes proposals plugin. Well, that sounds a bit fucked up, but we can always fix that. So what you're basically creating is universal templating system, which is creating docs in latex language, and then you're compiling them by outside latex engine. Yeah. So at th at the base of this, all it is, um, without anything that I'm working on at the moment, like the quotes and everything. So the quotes are built on top of you could say the compiler um all it is is python and ginger right and all we have in a document is your normal ginger includes and everything so i've just changed the name to what's used in other software packages that have got ginger that is intertwined in subtle in subtle text so we've got um a different name for a for a statement for a block and for a variable right so all it is is ginger that is being used 
to process a document that has got imports and includes and extends and it is resulting in a block of a a block of latex which looks like i'll show you what it looks like over here all it does is it outputs this bl the block that you see over here so this is processed with ginger and we got all of our all of our latex that's output which is actually quite a fucking lot it's this build um it's this block over here so it's the same as if you have html and you have ginger intertwined in the html like for flask or so i think flask uses ginger right so it's just like building html except we only using latex we do have html support as well though you can actually see over here i've got a html html is somewhere over here wheezy print here is a html one which is blank just give me a moment let's try open that again it's still blank well, that's weird. Hang on, let's try regenerate that. So I have HTML support. Um, can we just go run? And I don't know if this is going to work though, but we can try. No, I think I broke it. But we have HTML as well. That appears to be broken right now. It's not outputting anything. But yeah, so um, we can generate PDFs from HTML with CSS and everything. Um, I first thought maybe we could change from using LaTeX to using HTML, but the biggest issue would be including PDFs inside of it because the majority of the things that we have are scanned to PDF. And if we to, um, if we to include like evidence and, um, and certificates and licensing and everything, we can just include PDFs. So in, in latex is the include, um, there's include graphics that you can include a PDF or a specific page in the PDF. We got quite a few things that actually use that. Um, um, for instance, one of the things we have to do every year is submit a report to the bank um, on various things. And that report has got about 30 pages that's added e every month. And all we do at the moment is we just save PDFs into a directory. We then have template toolkit that pulls all the files from the directory. It throws them into the latex include graphics um, it determines how many pages each of the pdfs have and includes one full um, pdf file per hour page but scaled down and with a and with a and with a title on it so it automatically pulls pdfs into a that we have to send and it's so much easier doing it that way than it is uh, manually trying to get all that information and in. I mean I think last year's report we sent was over 300 pages long and that's just all automatically created now um, we just save it into a directory every month and at the end of the year we just generate the report easy as that it's quite nice I'm a firm supporter of having a document templating thing where you can just reuse things in future i mean it's so much easier um starting off with doing a specific type of proposal or so is generally a very very time consuming thing it's one of the reasons why i had to stop streaming at the beginning of this year in like april or so it's because i actually had to write a 300 
pay well that one was 210 pages or so so i i actually had to write that pretty much from scratch because the company that we were sending a proposal to changed the specification compared to what that specification was the previous year um the previous years now next year in 2022 like um april may june or so i think i'm gonna have to do one more of those but I might try and hand that off to my business partner to do instead. He can then just copy the ones we have done in the in the past. But all the information that he should need should be there. And how to do things are inside of the document itself. So all he has to do is read over the requirements um, that we have to... Um, that we have to um, that we have to meet, and then include all the sections that I included in the previous um, documents, and then just maybe add a few more. It makes things so much easier and faster to do. And now what we, we can do with these quotations as well, is seeing as we have access to the objects itself, we could then say as per above quotation which is being billed at so and so amount for instance um, so just so you can see how nice this is actually to use we can say testing um, day two quotes is costing you an enormous and we can put this in bold which is text bf and we can go var and we can go um, day to quotes dot total price maybe is going to work. I'm not sure. We can see if that does anything. So this is why I'm exposing it as objects as well. So you can just use things everywhere. So if you change the value of the quote, you now just do not um, you do not have to go everywhere and change everything. It's all automatic. Um, so if you templated a proposal and you want to say the same things for a different client, you'll be able to do that. Where the fuck is that test gone now? Testing. It should be here somewhere. There we go. So you can add the values and everything. What does the front end of this look like? Um... At the moment, it looks exactly like this, VS Code. <laughs> there isn't, um, we do not have one at the moment. Um, so what we do to do the documents and everything, it's inside of a Git repository. So we just copy the text file, open it in VS Code and then edit it. Because VS Code is actually very easy to use for almost anything. I mean, it's easier, to be completely honest, it's actually easier than Vim to be able to change something like this in. Mostly due, um, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you can enable um, the indent highlighting and everything, um, but it's just easier. It's easier just to click and open shit. Um, It's just easier to use. I mean, I probably switch between the two. I probably use Vim 50% of the time to edit these and the other 50% I'd probably use VS Code to edit them. Um, I mean, VS Code now supports, well, it supports regular expression search and replace, which is one of the biggest things I've probably used in the past. Um, it supports pretty much everything that one would need. In some cases, it might be a bit slower to do things, which is probably when I'd use Vim compared to it. What distribution of LaTeX are you using? Is it Mac text or using some Linux text? It's just plain. It's just plain LaTeX. Um, uh, all I literally did is um, I've got 
text live bin um funds extra so bin i think pulls in core i got funds extra that i need um i think i got latex extra i can't remember why um i don't know if i need pictures i have got ps tricks because that's used for some of our branding i believe but that i think is all that i'd use so it's just normal linux packages and they're available under ubuntu and debian as well so the template toolkit version that i have of this right um it had historical there's historical things here i'll show you that goes back all the way to debian stretch i believe yeah so there's a compatibility thing that we had um, so we pretty much just had the same packages installed under Debian Stretch. Um, it's when we moved our invoice generation from HTML to PDF, when we integrated the Perl version of this into our accounting system, which was back in the days of Debian Stretch, which is what it used to run at that time. And we were testing out on Arch um, with PDF compatibility set to 1.17. It was breaking Debian Stretch. And then it was breaking an Ubuntu server as well. So we had pretty much two systems that were being used in production to generate the PDF invoices and everything. And we had Arch that that I was using and that my other staff were using to do the templating and everything. And we had compatibility issues between it. But this is only going to be used with PDF compatibility 1.17 and above in future. And we'll probably have to add the versioning here based on the operating system version in future when it does change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the time? I need to... Okay, 11 more minutes and I must be off. Um, so yeah, BW Miller, there's no front end at the moment, mate. But in future, what I plan to have, right? Um, majority of this would probably be configurable in a front end. So you would have drop downs in the front end that you could pick to be able to um, generate the quotation or so. It's why I'm using YAML here. Um, so what one could actually do over here. So my probably in a few days or so, once we've got the proposal sorted out, we can then pull these details in from a file. Now, what that is going to be able to do is this section you see would have client details in it. It would have GPS locations and everything. And when you generate a quote using that specific specification file, you could then also generate the application forms used for the service providers. So the quote would generally have all the services we need on it in order to provide the service. The reason why we've got the item group is so we can then group every single service we need to provide that service to our client inside of the quote so if we change any component of its pricing our purchase pricing or anything like that we get up to um, up to date um, pricing that we can then quote a client the second benefit to that is we can now take the specification and we can fill out application forms with that so the application forms generally at the moment after one of our providers changed how they do things. It is generally about 130 values that you need to enter in. Um, now we can pretty much do all of that automatically. So there's 130 values plus a signature at the end of the page. So all we pretty much have to do is, um, I just have to see how we would do that. They said that they would accept it in S in Excel format, 
which will probably be the easiest. We then just open it up, replace the cells with the various values and um, save it. It's pretty much simple. Whereas right now it might take half an hour to an hour to fill that form out. So that's one of the other benefits we have of being able to display each and everything that we need is we can then throw that into a script or so that fills out a form. But there's no front end. So I think continuing on that as well, what we would have is um, we would probably have some sort of a wizard interface that you would be able to use to generate a quotation. Um, and God, I will be leaving in approximately seven minutes. So yeah, um, there's some interesting things that we can do with automation here. So, oh, it's not going to be proposals, it's going to be projects. And we can actually probably just delete everything and start with the plugin section at the end and copy stuff in that we need. Quotes, projects, filter, plugin. Uh, we still get past the plugin manager, doc plates. Project quotes, maybe it can be called project. Oh, it has to be quotes projects because it's a plugin to well, it's a plugin about um on top of the quotes. Doc plates, maybe we can call it project quotes plugin, even though it's named different. Actually, let's just keep it named the fucking same quotes projects. Sounds a bit fucked up, but um, that description is not right. Um, Initialize plugin. Save it. The plugin manager. Which we use in the factory below. Okay. Um, projects, we can copy the factories. Okay. Uh, create quote project. This should probably then be project quote. Create quote time based. Ah, oh. I wonder if we should call it something like that. Maybe create quote time. Not sure. Create time based quote would be even, I mean, that would be ideal. Hmm. 
maybe we'll just call it that. Um, unless we call it create, I think time based quote would be the best. Fuck is the time best quote called? Is there any specific word for that? I don't think so. Create time best quote. Cheers, mate. Have a good one, man. I'll actually be off soon as well. But I hope you sleep well and have a great festive season. Um, we don't need collections anymore. I don't think. I mean, maybe we could call it project. I'm not sure. Maybe just create quote project. doesn't sound as great we can always change it create quote project I'll see if I can get some input on if that's the best name to choose for that and then this is going to be docplates quote project oh, it really doesn't sound good we probably need a different name for all of this shit Hmm. Okay. Anyway, I need to be off, guys. Um, we shall probably continue on Tuesday morning. Monday here is going to be a public holiday. I'm not sure if I'll be streaming over the weekend. There's always a possibility, although I'm not quite sure. Um, we will be then continuing with our project-based quotes or time-based quotes. We can then just decide how we're going to name this shit and see how far we get with that. Anyway, I hope everyone has a nice morning, afternoon, evening and you enjoy your day and the rest of the following days to come up and i will catch you on the flip side have a good one guys cheers man